Welcome to Conversations That Matter. I'm Ron Gray. I am joined by my friend, Dr. Melissa Cheeseman, today to talk about two of the most polarizing yet interesting <laughs> issues in the country. Uh, she is an emergency medicine physician and faith leader in our community. And uh, we recently had some discussions that I found very riveting. Uh, so I asked her to sit down with me and share the conversation with you guys. So welcome and uh, enjoy the conversation. Welcome to you, Melissa. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Thanks Excited for being here. to be here. Yeah. 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 Looking forward to So the we're turning our private conversations into <laughs> public now. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, this should be really interesting. But uh, we uh, talked uh, a lot about the intersection between politics yeah. and religion. And uh, <clears throat> while it can be very polarizing, it's such an important discussion sure. to have. And I really can't think of anybody. Uh, more uh, constructive <laughs> and fair than you uh, to have this conversation with. So I want to start out with maybe talking about the difference between religion and faith. Sure. And even uh, politics and public policy. Uh, we know there's a lot of um, uh, dynamics around those. So what's your take on how they differ. Yeah, and I think probably there's a good degree of uh, maybe overlap or intersection. Yeah, if you sort of split those out, um, the difference between religion and faith, you know, religion is a, it's like a construct of belief for people. And often it comes with, for example, a way of worship or a code of conduct. So you have lots of different religions like Christianity and Hinduism and, and on and on. Faith is more personal. It, it's um, it's defining who it is that you have confidence and trust in. Who or what do you have confidence and trust in? So I can say I have faith that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. I don't know that that's true until you right. actually do it, but just based on your history and what I know about you, um, I believe, I trust, I have confidence in the fact that you're going to do what you say. That's that's yeah. faith. So they're, they're related probably to some degree, uh, but... Uh, but they're distinct as well. I think the same thing's true with politics and public policy. Politics um, really has more to do with the system of government. So how do people get power? How do they express their power? Mm -hmm. uh, what does that look like for a community? Whereas public policy really is more, um, how do people come around the table and decide how to resolve society's issues you know, you've got problems and and differences and all of that how do you resolve that mm -hmm. distribution of resource and and whatnot so public policy really has more to do with how do you solve problems as opposed to politics which is just a system and we've got a republic but other people have kings and queens and dictators right. and such so so they're related but yeah. distinct at the same time very good answers to those questions uh with that being said, do you think faith has a place in public policy? Yeah, I think the challenge is um, as long as human beings are making public policy, faith is going to be a part of it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we all have faith in something. Atheists do. Animists have faith in nature. Christians have faith in God, it, you know, we all have faith in something. Some have faith in logic or whatever. Yeah. But that faith, I mean, we all have faith in something. And that faith is what informs our morality mm -hmm. and what informs our opinion. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have people who have opinions <laughs> trying to, you know, publish public policy, right. as long as there's human beings making public policy, they're going to be, they're going to affect one another. So I don't really know how you can separate out what you believe in from mm -hmm. how you think society is going to best function. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenging one. It is. Do you, do you feel at times faith is politicized uh, on e even both sides absolutely. of the aisle of the political arena? Absolutely. And I think politics or, or uh, the political structure um, capitalizes on what it sees as beneficial to itself, mm -hmm. right? Like, like you and I have talked a lot about the fact that we've got this two-party system yeah. and certain religious blocks of 
uh, expression or, or faith or whatever mm -hmm. uh, are targeted by certain political parties. And so yeah. there's, a, there's a real, um, I think a real unfortunate tension in the two yeah. um, that I don't know how you totally split those out. Like yeah. they intersect, but they're also being abused and being... Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. I wonder yeah. at times, because you look at political parties and you've said we're a two-party system, it, it's almost like they're... Uh, their own business entities, if sure, you will, and absolutely. then uh, leveraging religion or faith or however you want to define uh, those terms um, to pull in members of the community based on that to support their ideas or uh, absolutely. the lack thereof, Or a cetera. power structure yeah, yeah. that they're it's trying to... It's really about to, power. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's about and I power. think sometimes that may be a constraint and maybe watered down faith when then it's politicized yeah. to influence a certain policy or absolutely. Uh, idea. Um, do you think there, uh, I, and I know the answer to this question because we've <laughs> talked before, is there a one political party fits all for the faith community? No, <laughs> absolutely not. As a matter of fact, um, I just read an article by a guy named Tim Keller, who's a, he's a Christian writer, but his, his sense is, or his question is, how do Christians fit into, how do people, for example, who follow Jesus, but I, I would mm -hmm. say you could say the same thing about other, other faith or religious yeah, expressions. So. How do they fit into our two-party system? And mm -hmm. his sense is, they don't. Mm -hmm. Culturally, our expectation is to align conservatives with Republicans, so conservative evangelicals with the Republican Party, liberal ev evangelicals with the Democratic Party, and, and create this line. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, I don't know any conservative Christians who buy into everything Republican, right. and I don't know any uh, liberal Christians who buy into everything Democratic. Right. But when you only have two options, mm -hmm then you, your churches, your uh, faith communities tend to drive you in one direction or another, and then you're lumped in with them, and then all of a sudden, um, like, that's, that's who you are. That's all you are. It's and almost like it's defined you. for you based yeah. on your faith community yeah. or the lack thereof. Yeah, and you're judged based on that. Yeah. I tell you, Ron, one of the most important things that I've learned this year came from you in, in one of our earlier discussions um, that I think plays into this conversation when, you know, so much about politics right now is about the issue. Mm -hmm. It's the issue of abortion. It's mm -hmm. the issue of economy. It's the issue of environment. And as soon as I hear your issue, I judge you one way or the other. The issue. Yeah. yeah, and your, your statement was, I really wish people would just see me. Yeah. Like, see me. Yeah. Like that's where the common humanity, and then we can we can have a discussion about the right. issues, about what you think and I think, and where can we maybe find middle ground or whatever. Yeah. But when people are focused on the issues and yeah. not focused on the people, yeah. on the person, like we lose all. Then I become the face of that issue. A and absolutely. No one can see past me because they're absolutely. seeing the issue and the position that I might yeah. take based yeah. on that issue. And good friends become enemies. Yeah. Yeah. And it all plays out on Facebook and or whatever. Yes. Become enemies. Yeah. Yes. The think, kitchen table the becomes World, World War Three. Yes. Uh, yeah. And these are the same people that two weeks ago you had no idea what their stance was. Right. And you loved them. Right. And now today right. you know their stance and you hate them. And I think <laughs> sometimes know? people assume based on your party affiliation because you've had some segment of conversation in the past or you see a social media post. Sure. Then because... Ron is associated with being a Democrat, then uh, he automatically is judged as a supporter of this policy and Absolutely. that policy. And that All is so Democrat. far from the truth. Absolutely. And I think we do that to each other. Absolutely. Unconsciously, I think that of uh, sometimes even people in the faith community, yeah. then I yeah. automatically think, well, they're against this and Absolutely. that. And that's so unfair and really wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I appreciate you saying that about the see me first concept because that's really the premise of conversations that matter. Uh, building on that, I have this idea that we have more in common yeah. than we have different. Yeah. And if we could find a way to really look past those 
uh, party walls, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And um, uh, those assumptions that oftentimes are wrong and see you for who you really are and sure. even ask you what yeah. you think yeah. rather than just assuming based on your party affiliation or because you're a faith leader then I automatically think that you think this way and yeah. you're against me or you're against them or whatever. Sure. Uh, just crazy thoughts, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and just begin to build from commonality out. And of course, when we get out a little further, we'll realize that, yeah, because of one thing or another, whether it be faith or whether it be culture, you have a different idea about one issue than I do. Yeah. But because we've learned more about each other, yeah. and maybe even we've had conversations outside of politics or religion, then maybe there's a friendship that, develop, sure. that has developed. And we can then be more, I don't like the word tolerable, but yeah. we can be more um, digestive of each other's ideas and not be so divided based on our differences, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's that's my hope from sure. conversations like sure. this is that we realize we really do have more in common than we have different. Yeah. Yet we as a whole body with in our community and across the country typically lead with our differences. Yeah. And the that's more and more one. we watch cable news <laughs> and the more and more we travel ourselves and sort ourselves, then it's yeah. all about our differences because yeah. we don't know enough about each other sure. to discover that commonality. Yeah, and we've lost the art of what it means to agree to disagree. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If I know, like like you can have the conversation. So you you formed a certain uh, moral compass or a certain set of convictions really based on your family of origin, mm -hmm. based on experiences you had when you were growing up, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And, and when we can begin to discuss that, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, like I didn't... Yeah. Yeah. I didn't grow up that way. I didn't know that. I didn't know people felt like that. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know? And I think that, that sort of leads into another thought I had uh, uh, about um, can a society have morals and values without a clear dependence on faith? Yeah, that's a tough one, you know. It's, it's interesting. Um, I don't know that you totally can because everybody mm. has faith in something. Yeah. If all if all humans you answered have that faith question in early on, yeah. and I thought, oh wow, but, that's that's relative to that question. Yeah, but yeah. then but then what do you do, right? So we just got back. My husband and I just got back from Nepal, and uh, Nepal as a country is eighty five percent Hindu, wow. and just in the last couple months, they've passed laws uh, against. Christianity and sharing your faith and all of that. And you scratch your head and think, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe because it makes it easier to govern mm -hmm. when everybody has the same moral foundation. Mm -hmm. So I think as a country, I think we could agree as a country that our initial constitution and laws and all that were probably based on Judeo-Christian values, Yeah. yeah. right? So Ten Commandments, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's why we would say murder's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why we would say stealing and tax evasion and those kinds of things are wrong mm -hmm. because there's a foundation or a sort of moral compass. Mm -hmm. Well, the more outside perspectives and different religious perspective and faith paradigms you bring into the conversation, the more diversity you get mm -hmm. around what really constitutes a moral foundation. Mm -hmm. Because if you think killing people's fine, and I don't think right. killing people's fine, and it may how be different do, perspectives based yeah, on those? How different do they faiths. come together to form public policy mm -hmm. that makes everybody happy? Yeah, right. Well, let me ask you this: Even though our country was built on, and I think most people would agree with that statement, Judeo-Christian values. Yeah. How do we reconcile the? Um, Dependence of being free from someone's influence of religion yeah. or faith, uh, and that be permissible within the social structure of our communities. Um, at the same time, our values in the beginning really were built on, sure, um, in part, Judeo-Christian faith. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. I mean, does. that's the hard yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah. You, you, you've you had asked a question at one point about how how can you uh, bring values and and uh, 
convictions and those kinds of things to the table and not risk marginalizing people mm-hmm. who don't have, have those same values or yeah. convictions. And the truth is, if you have people on two sides of the same problem, somebody's going to be, either you're going to trample on my convictions or right. I'm going to trample on your convictions. And how is either one of those more right, right than the other? Right. So yeah. how do you find that common ground? I think yeah. the truth is there's probably a, a way of existing somewhere in the middle. Yeah. But we're so polarized right now, it's hard to see how that's even possible. Yeah. Well, know? the more and more we talk about this type of issue, how politics and religion intersect, maybe we'll begin to discover our commonality yeah, yeah. and not be so divided by those differences. That's my hope. Sure. And I think as a civilized society, we can really accomplish more of that. Yeah. Of course, it's not going to be a utopia. If we, but, if we stay civilized. <laughs> if we stay civilized, <laughs> right, right. Well, this is going to wrap up segment one, and uh, I hope you'll stay tuned for more with Dr. Melissa Cheeseman on the intersection of politics and religion. Uh, you can follow more conversations at conversationsthatmatter.co. You can link up to our Facebook and Instagram accounts there. If you're uh, watching, click at the bottom of the screen and subscribe to our YouTube or iTunes channel. If you're listening, uh, you can link up through the website, again, conversationsthatmatter.co. And um, uh, check back with us next time because we're going to continue the conversation with Dr. Cheeseman. And uh, remember, we have more in common than we have different. And the way we heal the division among us is lead with that commonality versus our differences.